Hi guys, Jamie here from JB Motion. In today's video, we're going to be looking at caustics and how we can make our scene have caustics. Um, also, my friend who is named Peter wanted me to say this. Uh, so I said it and now he can never ask me for anything again. So let's get started on this. Here we go. Right, okay, so we're gonna need a cube, first of all, and we can, let's bring this down in size. We can go with dragging it with these orange circles to bring it down. I'm gonna go for about 10 on the Z, and I'm gonna go for about something like 160 on the X, and the Y, I'll go for 100. Might even reduce the X down a bit more so that it's more square. So I'm gonna go for 100 on the X as well. And now we can put this, make sure that it, it's on our floor. We don't have a floor yet, but when we do, we're gonna make sure that it's on our floor. The size in the Y is 100, so in the coordinates, let's set this to 50. So that's gonna be on the floor. So we can create the floor now. Uh, we'll do this with a plane and we can just scale that up with our scale tool and let's call this floor and we'll call this cube and it's already called cube so that's handy uh, we're going to create a new material and we're calling this one floor and this one is going to be cube so let's apply this floor material to our floor object and if we open it up, go into the color channel, let's just bring that to as white as it can be on the uh, color there. Okay, and let's apply this cube material to our cube. And we need this to be glass. So open that up. Let's go to the transparency channel, turn that on, and we're going to set the refraction preset to glass. Cool. Okay, so we have our glass cube and we have our floor. So now we're going to clone our cube so that we're going to get a nice circular uh, clone of these cubes. So let's select our cube object, hold down Alt, go to MoGraph, hold down Alt before you're clicking on the cloner, and then it'll automatically add the cube as a child of it. Now we can set our cloner. In the Object tab, we can set our mode to be radial. Go into the Transform, and let's rotate this pitch here to be 90 degrees and go into the coordinates tab and we can set the pitch on this to be 90 degrees so if we go to our object tab now we can increase the radius of this i'm just going to turn on my line so i can see better what i'm doing and be in your keyboard and now we can increase our radius so something like that should be fine so about 94 centimeters for the radius and now we have our cubes, they're cloned, and they're on the floor. Okay, so let's set up a camera now. Let's create one, make it active. Go into the coordinates tab, let's set the, let's uh, set the rotation here on the heading to be zero, on the pitch here to be 90, or minus 90. And now we can find where we're supposed to be. So let's get that in the center and zoom in on that. Something like that. So we have it set to, the camera is going to be, coordinates wise, it's going to be zero on the X. It's going to be about this on the Y and zero on the Z. And that's going to center it up nicely for us. Okay, so let's render to picture viewer and see what we get. So we have these um, glass cubes and they're cloned and they're on the floor. So I want to maybe just bring the cloned objects kind of down through the floor a little bit. See if I can eliminate this blackness that I'm getting, this black kind of grain. So I'm going to jump into my front view and I'm going to select my cloner and I'm hitting spacebar there to switch to my previously selected tool. You can, you can switch between your current uh, selected tool currently select tool and your 
previously selected tool. It's a handy tip. So let's bring this down just a tiny little bit so it's just gone past our floor, which is here. If we middle mouse click to jump back into perspective and render to picture viewer again, uh, it looks like we're not seeing anything, which is actually fine. The glass is there, we just can't see it. We're just eliminating this nasty grain there by bringing the uh, cloner object down past our floor. Okay, so let's create our light. We're only going to need one, and we can go into our front view and just bring that up along the Y to about the center point of our cubes. Render to picture viewer again. Now we can see we got our glass back and everything's looking nice. Okay, so if we want to see some caustics, we first need to select our light, go into the caustics tab, turn on surface caustics. Let's leave it at about, well, we can bring it up to 125% for energy. That's going to be the brightness of the caustics. Photons, we can go for about 50,000. And go into your render settings, and we need to turn on caustics. Click on this effect here button, and caustics is, where is it? Here it is. So caustics turned on. Now let's do a render to picture viewer and you'll see that it's preparing the photon tree. And there we have it. Our caustics are taking effect. Brilliant. Now it's looking a bit rough. See all these kind of rough, you know, this, it looks like tiny little squares. We can improve that by, well, what we can do first of all is we can actually just move our light over. Now this isn't how we're gonna improve the little tiny squares that we're seeing. To do that, we have to increase the number of photons. But moving the position of the light might help us a bit also, because the more we increase these photons, the more we're increasing our render time. So I'm bringing my light over to about here, relative to our cloned objects. I'm gonna do a render to picture viewer again on that. Okay, so looks like we're going to have to increase the photons. Um, what I want to do, yeah, we'll increase the photons and see what that does for us. So select your light object and let's multiply this by 2. Multiply by 2 and hit enter. Now it looks like we have 1, okay, so we have 100,000. How much do we have? We have... Uh, yeah, we have 100,000 photons. Let's see if that looks any better. Well, it should look better. Yeah, so you can see that we're kind of smoothing out those tiny little squares there, uh, which is cool. So we'll leave it at that for now. Will we go up a little bit more in the photons? Um, yeah, we could. We'll go up to 500,000 on the photons. Render to picture viewer again. You can see that it's calculating the photons. It's taken longer as well to render. Um, so we had one second. We increased the photons. It went up and it's going to go up again. So it's going to go up to 13 seconds. So quite a big jump there. Um, but as you can see, it's looking much better. Much smoother and nicer and lovelier. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, you can't really see the glass, so what I want to do is, well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this cube, hold down control and just drag down, let go, now we have another cube. Let's make this cube a child of our existing cube. And now we're gonna select this cube, hold down Alt again, before you do this, hold down Alt, keep holding down Alt, now we're going to hover over this instance button and hold down our uh, left click and we're going to go to atom array and let go of the click. Now we're not letting go of alt until we let go of the click and that's automatically going to add the cube as a child of the atom array. And now, now some of you might know what this does, but if you don't, well, you're going to know now. This is what it does. For every line in our cube, it's going to put in a cylinder, which we can control the radius of here. And for every point in our cube, it's going to create a sphere, 
which we can control the radius of here. So that's a pretty cool uh, tool. You can do loads of stuff with this t uh, with the atom array object. So I'm setting my sphere radius to 2 and my cylinder radius to about 0 0.35. I want to apply the same material as my floor to my atom array object. Let's hop back into our camera. We might as well put a protection tag on that as well so we can't move it around. Render to picture viewer on that and see what it looks like. Now this has taken us, the last frame took us about 13 seconds. So this one should take more or less the same because we didn't really do much to it. Except make it look way better. That looks a lot better now compared to the previous scene. Couldn't really, there was no real definition of the edges of our glass so that's kind of make made this look a bit better so that's looking really cool i'm happy with the caustics and i'm happy with the render time on each frame of this so the last part of this is just to rotate create an animation of our um clones rotating so we're going to get some cool bouncing around of our caustics as our cubes rotate and then that's it and we're done so go into your cloner object go to the coordinates tab and we're going to be animating the heading um, so I'm just going to undo that I'm going to put a keyframe here at frame 0 I am on frame 0 add a keyframe on the heading for the rotation there I'm going to increase the frame range to 150 and I can drag that out extend it out and then I'm going to go to my last frame and I'm going to set this heading to be 360 so we're going to go for a full loop and add a keyframe now if we watch this you can see that it eases in and at the end of the animation it eases out now we don't want to do this because well we you could do that but i want this animation to look like a perfect loop so we're going to turn off the easing in and the easing out if i hold down shift and hit f3 on my keyboard this will bring up my timeline my dope sheet or whatever you call it now some people call it a dope sheet but it says timeline up here so um, that's open for debate I suppose and uh, select your cloner object in your timeline and just hit L on your keyboard and that's just the equivalent of just using this button here and you're gonna remove the easing in and the easing out from your animation I'm gonna hit L on my keyboard and now we have a linear um, beginning and it's linear a linear animation so that is it. So we can set this up for render. Go into your, let's first of all, go into your render settings. Go to output 1920. I'm going to go for 1920 by 1080. If you want a quicker render, 1280 by 720. Um, or smaller again for an even quicker render, of course. We're going to render all the frames. We're going to save this to a place of your choosing you guys can set that up yourselves anti-aliasing is turned off looks like we're actually fine without it if i go into my picture viewer you know oof, you could argue that there are some bits that could be tidied up with anti-aliasing turned on like the cylinder for example do you know what every time i say i'm not going to turn it on and then i always end up turning it on so i am going to turn it on and i set it to two by two Guys, if you want to reduce render times, leave it set to geometry. It will look fine. I'm just, you know, being greedy. And uh, I, I like to cause pain to my computer as well. That's why I like to do stuff like this for no reason. But uh, you guys could leave that off. I mean, it, it will look fine also for this animation. And I think that's it. Yeah, that is it. Um... Yeah, that's everything, guys. So, again, hope you learned a lot. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe. It really helps me out, and I'll see you in the next video.